My name is uh, Shaban Kardash, a faculty member at the Department of Political Science and International Relations. I am very pleased to have with me uh, Professor Bahadur Pehlivanturk, Professor Punari Pek from the department. Uh, today, uh, we will launch the first of our seminars uh, this year. Uh, the department has been organizing uh, diplomacy and peace seminars. This year, the seminars will be organized in coordination with the Eurasian Studies Center, which is also part of our university. And together, uh, we will aspire to bring to your attention high quality diplomatic speakers, active diplomats, uh, also uh, ministers in the past we did host, as well as uh, scholars with policy uh, background. Our objective is to uh, bring the uh, policy world to academic world and create opportunities for exchanges with the objective of contributing to better understanding of issues of uh, peace and contributing to uh, peace efforts uh, in that respect. The seminars uh, have been organized in the last three years at our university. We found that experience very fruitful for our students, for our academic community, and we aspire to continue uh, the same practice this year. But as you know, uh, we are living in a, a new world, uh, given the pandemic uh, conditions. As a result, uh, we have to adjust to the new reality. And today we are with you uh, over a Zoom platform. Let me say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on uh, wherever you are. Uh, this is actually the advantage of the uh, new uh, technology, the new situation. So we are able to reach uh, to you wherever you are, irrespective of the physical uh, distance, uh, as long as the time and uh, connection facilities allow our uh, virtual meeting. Today, uh, we are honored to host uh, Professor uh, Taniguchi, who was a, a, an advisor to the uh, former uh, Prime Minister uh, Abe. He will share his uh, views about the Japanese foreign policy during his time, as well as uh, he will uh, be offering his views about the uh, future of Japanese foreign policy. And later, my colleague, Professor Bahadur Pehlvanturk, will moderate the debate. Before uh, we start the lecture by Professor Taniguchi, uh, let me also uh, invite Ambassador Miyajima, the Japanese ambassador in Ankara, who has been a very uh, kind supporter of our university in our uh, very, uh, various activities. Uh, as uh, some of you are already aware, we have been organizing uh, a seminar series and joint events uh, with the Japanese scholars, thanks to uh, funding from the uh, Japanese uh, government. His embassy has been so kind to help us in these efforts. Also, he has been a regular attendee of uh, many of our events in the past. But unfortunately, he has to move to the next station in his uh, career. So he's uh, moving back and then uh, today, uh, he was so kind to offer to uh, give us uh, some of his views and uh, welcome uh, the audience uh, before the professor's uh, speech. Ambassador, please, uh, you have the floor at this stage. Thank you. Merhaba. Bugün böylesine güzel bir fırsat yarakları için Tobu Üniversitesi Tobu Üniversitesi'nin Sayın e, üyeleri ne ve Sayın Taniguchi Bey'e içten teşekkür ederim e, teşekkür ederimi sunarım. Japonya'nın e, Polonya e, Büyükelçisi olarak e, e, tayinim e, çıkmış e, bulunmakta e, ve e, Türkiye'den e, ayrılmam e, gerek, gerekiyor. Türkiye'de e, e, bulunduğumu e, üç sene e, boyunca yoğun ama bir o, o kadar o kadar da a, key, 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 keyfeli e, bak, bakıp e, ce, e, geçirdim. Türkiye'de e, bugün ne kadar 
edi besi sehi ziyaret ettim. E, gittim her yerde, her yerde e, son derece sıcak bir şekilde e, karşılandım. Ve Japonya Büyük Yatısı olarak e, oldukça e, e, keyifle e, e, çalışabildiğim için çok mutluyum. Uh, with the Tobe University since 2014, we have been inviting very uh, prominent scholars and, and, uh, and specialists uh, from Japan and uh, conducted uh, uh, diplomatic seminar. This time, uh, that, uh, uh, as I explained, that uh, the first time that online uh, seminar. I'm particularly happy to uh, uh, welcome uh, uh, the Mr. Taniguchi, uh, that uh, today uh, I'm, uh, we are really uh, fortunate to be able to listen to his very, very uh, 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 precious kind of the views, uh, working very closely with the Prime Minister. Uh, uh, thank you. Once I would like to reiterate once again that uh, that my gratitude uh, to to uh, to the viewers, uh, Professor Taniguchi that all the people working at the, the, the Tobe University to make this online uh, seminar possible. Uh, Polonya Biyokiyasi olarak uh, atandım ama uh, bundan sonra da uh, Türkiye'nin dostu ve uh, destekçisi olarak Türkiye-Japonya uh, ilişkilerinin uh, gelişmesinde ya almaya devam et etmek istiyorum. Türkiye ve Japonya iki devlet tek yürektir. Teşekkür ederim. Uh, we also thank you uh, Mr. Ambassador for these very kind uh, and warm uh, words about the friendship with uh, Turkey uh, between our countries. Now without uh, further ado, uh, please uh, let me move to Professor Bader uh, Belvan Türk to moderate uh, today's seminar. Father, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Shaban Sensei. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Professor Tanekuchi and all the participants who came today. Uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Taneguchi briefly and talk a little bit about what is going to be touching on today. Professor Taneguchi, uh, Tomohiko Taneguchi, is currently at the Keio University graduate school of system design and management and he's been researching on international political economy and japanese diplomacy but he's very well known with his position as a special advisor to prime minister abe uh, until abe stepped down prime minister abe stepped down at the 16th of september uh, just last month uh, before he was also the counselor in the prime ministry office uh, until the Prime Minister office, uh, has, uh, Professor Taniguchi has a long career. He spent 20 years uh, in Nikkei Business, a very well-known and prestigious weekly magazine. And he joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs after that as uh, Deputy Press Secretary and Deputy Director General for Public Diplomacy. Until he left the ministry three years later, he addressed the English-speaking press and wrote speeches for the then Foreign Minister Taro Aso, was very influential in improving relations with Turkey as well. Uh, while with the uh, Nikkei Weekly magazine, he spent uh, time in London uh, as uh, the magazine's correspondent for three years in, at the end of 1990s. And in 1999, the Foreign Press Association in London elected him president, the first one from coming from the east, from east of Suez. He spent spectacles at Woodrow Wilson School, Princeton University as a Fulbright Visiting Fellow at Shanghai Institute for International Studies, and also at the Brookings Institute as SNAP's Fellow. Um, he also has experience as the advisor to the chairman to the, of the Central Japan Railway Company, while having uh, visiting professorships at Keio University and Meiji University. Originally, uh, Professor Taniguchi has a, a, a Bachelor of Law degree from prestigious Univers University of Tokyo and a doctorate in national security from uh, Tokushoku University. He has written and or, co or authored or co-authored many books. Uh, the last one is his experience about Abe's leadership, very close experience, and he has appeared live numerous times on BBC 
Al Jazeera, CNN, CNA, CNA, and TRT as well. Uh, Professor Tanaguchi is going to today talk about Abe's foreign policy and the future of Japanese foreign policy. Let me talk very briefly about Abe. Abe has been the longest serving prime minister in Japan's history for seven years and eight months. This is a record. And he lives a legacy. Uh, and this legacy includes Japan's first period of sustained economic growth since 1991. He managed to revive world's third largest economy. And he is an interpreter, an ideational interpreter. He came with some uh, concepts such as abenomics, which, which is three arrows, um, quantitative easing, fiscal symmetry, structural reforms. He was not shy in uh, uh, taking unpopular policies as well, putting down unpopular policies like increasing the consumption tax in Japan. But Japan managed to have unemployment rate less than 3% during this time, which is very enviable at least up until the COVID-19 broke out. He also had very uh, interpreter uh, ideas about aging, which became an acute problem in Japan and related with it, womanomics to improve the position of women in Japan. Uh, we studied his uh, foreign policy also ideas and initiatives a lot. Uh, under Prime Minister Abe, Japan has been a source of a stability in the world facing great upheaval. And he uh, set Japan on a foreign policy path which embraces multilateralism and allowed Japan to play a more influential role in global politics. He was uh, very, uh, Japan during this time stepped in in Trans-Pacific Partnership when United States withdrew. He managed to reinterpret the constitution of Japan, uh, very controversial, but this allowed Japan to be more active in uh, uh, peacekeeping and also it expanded the Japanese military's role in its uh, allied theater. And uh, Japan also, um, uh, as Abe also reinterpreted and redefined Japanese foreign aid, and it became an instrumental foreign policy goal, which put Japan in the diplomatic map. As a part of this, Abe also uh, put initiatives about health, global health, particularly what is called the universal health coverage, and pushed it in the world agendas. Uh, Prime Minister Abe is also a father of idea of FOIP, the free and open Indo-Pacific. So um, we see that Abe has, uh, had a clear vision for Japan at a time when countries across the globe were have been struggling to grapple with the shifts in the international balance of power and changes in economic growth. Now, all these ideational uh, entrepreneurship, let's say, these new ideas, new policy initiatives, Professor Taniguchi has been a close associate, a close advisor to Abe. So I suspect that he has a, a lot of salt and pepper in articulation of these policies, formulation of them, and even maybe more. So without delaying any further, I would like to leave the floor, or to be exact, leave the screen to Professor Taniguchi. Professor Taniguchi, thank you for being with us. The floor is thank yours. you. Thank you, uh, Bahadir uh, Pehil Banturk, Professor. Uh, for having me and thank you all at uh, Ebb University for having me as well. And this is something that I have long wanted to do uh, while uh, Mr. Miyajima, Ambassador Miyajima, a great, good friend of mine, uh, is uh, still uh, uh, in uh, his uh, duty in Turkey. Now, uh, for the last seven years and eight months, which is not a short period of time, I spent uh, almost every day with uh, Shinzo Abe and I accompanied him for his journey abroad. Uh, speaking of uh, which, he uh, traveled extensively covering certainly Turkey a couple of times, but uh, the net total of 80 countries, the gross total of which is uh, 176. The mileage, the government aircraft uh, that uh, he took uh, covered uh, actually was longer than the two return trips from the earth to the moon. So he was um, obviously among the um, globe trotters of a kind. And he certainly succeeded in broaden, broadening Japanese uh, diplomatic space and strategic space. But I cannot, uh, I cannot start my talk without touching on the unique friendship. 
the friendship between Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Shinzo Abe. Interestingly, Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Shinzo Abe were both born in the same year of 1954. They would come across both as prime ministers in the year 2013 when Istanbul, as you recall, and Tokyo were competing against each other for the host cityship of the 2020 Olympic Games. And it was at that time Prime Minister Abe made the first visit as Prime Minister to Turkey. And he gave a uh, very short uh, five minute speech to the um, Japan Turkey Joint Economic Committee meeting, its 20th meeting on Friday, May 3rd, 2013. And let me just uh, repeat what he said. It started like this Toruko, 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 the Japanese name for Turkey. From many Japanese, it is a name that rings soothingly in our ears. It is a sound that gives rise to steady and endearing memories. And then he goes on to say, it was exactly 30 years ago that a Japanese foreign minister first visited Turkey. That foreign minister 30 years ago was my father, Shintaro Abe. I was serving as his secretary at the time, and so it was 30 years ago that I first set foot in this country. This trip is a bit of a nostalgic journey for me. Thus started, the speech ends with the following uh, paragraph. And then let me just uh, read it out. In closing, I would like to say a few words about Istanbul and Tokyo. First of all, if Istanbul is selected to host the Olympic Games, then I will be the first person to send up an emphatic hurrah for Istanbul. And in return, should the Olympic Games come to Tokyo, then I hope that the people of Turkey will be the first to congratulate Tokyo. This is among the most memorable speeches that Shinzo Abe gave. Uh, not, uh, not only about Turkey-Japan relationship, but also about um, many other things. Uh, he has actually given a lot of speeches, albeit short. This one is uh, a memorable one. Memorable because uh, a couple months after that, in September 2013, in Buenos Aires, of all places, when the International Olympic Committee held its important meeting to choose the host city for the 2020 Games, the final announcement was made by then Chairman Roguet of IOC, International Olympic Committee, who pronounced Tokyo. Of course, Shinzo Abe and all other members of the Japanese delegation stood up and cheered and yelled and screamed. And it was at that time an 880, 184, six feet tall president then Prime Minister Erdogan stood up and came to Shinzo Abe to give, to give his big, big hug. <laughs> and I remember that uh, Shinzo, Abe, Shinzo Abe's eyes turned wet. So created was this unique bond that has bound the two men um, Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Shinzo Abe till today. Indeed, when Shinzo Abe 
made an announcement rather ab abruptly that he would step down as prime minister due to his chronic illness of ulcerative colitis. Uh, President Erdogan gave him a phone call on the 9th of September and they reassured the eternity of the friendship that they both succeeded in forging. Views, thoughts, policies of each country may differ. They both know that, but respect for one another. Respect from Shinzo Abe to Recep Tayyip Erdogan and respect from President Erdogan to Prime Minister Abe were the bonds really that have bound these two men together. So Turkey and Japan's uh, relationship has always been unique even if their policies and thoughts may differ. The intimacy and friendship never go away. And they all come back to, to give a strong glue that bind these two nations together. Shinzo Abe, in his speech that I just cited, never forgot mentioning the future possibilities of Turkey. Turkey is a country that has a great many young aspiring men, women, boys and girls. Therefore, the future is in your hands. That's the kind of message that Shinzo Abe uh, wanted to convey to the audience in Turkey. Frankly speaking, I, as a member of the delegation that went to Buenos Aires for IOC meeting, the narrative that Istanbul uh, had was impeccable. That's what we thought. The narrative that the first Muslim nation hosting the Olympic Games, the narrative that the nation that is unique as regards bridging the East and the West hosting the Games, the narrative that um, uh, a country that sits right in the middle between Europe and Asia hosting the Games. It was a strong, strong narrative. And worse still, Tokyo once had its Olympic Games in 1964. Therefore, many of us actually thought that Tokyo might lose against Istanbul. The fact of the matter is, Tokyo won, and then Erdogan stood up, and despite the hardship, difficulties, gave a powerful big hug to Shinzo Abe. So, you may have uh, questions about this unique relationship further, but time is running out fast. So I would like to share some of the slides that I have, that I have uh, made for this seminar. And let me just share the slides. Uh, hold on a sec. This is it. This is the cover. The following slides are about Japanese. What? Uh, strategic space, geostrategic map. If there is one thing that cannot change, that is there eternally, that is location. Uh, as is the case with um, uh, businesses, that's also true when it comes to the state's uh, geostrategic space. What matters is, it, what matters is location, location location and the location in, in which Japan finds itself is again unique if you think about it Japan's neighbors include remember that Japan's neighbors include 
from the north to the south, Russia, North Korea, China. What is it that's in common among these three nations? What is it? These are all nuclear powered nations, nuclear armed nations, I'm sorry. And two are the ones that have、uh, been declared, that have been well known as nuclear nations, but another is a quasi declared nuclear power. And there is one other thing these two nations know very, very little. If not at all, nothing about democracy, right? Such is Japan's neighborhood. And among these neighbors, China is a growing power. It's getting bigger, bigger still. So you must modify your mental map. You must slightly adapt yourself to the To, the, to, to how large this Japan's neighbor is by recalibrating your mind, recalibrating your brain map. And the next page is about the recalibration. And I'll show you what. This is what I did with an internet site called the truesize.com. If you Google the true size of The true size of you, you can reach the website like this. What you can do there on that web website is to pin set, is to hand pick a country of choice and to put it on a map of your choice to see how large the chosen country may be if put on your own soil. The Mercator projection is deceptive, as we all know, which is the reason why Greenland、uh, appears to be way too large. But the fact of the matter is, it's the deceptive image that Mercator projection projects. So I handpicked China, PRC, and put it right above Turkey. As you can see. Now you can see if China were on the European Eurasian continent, you would have no Germany, no France, no Italy, no Greece, and indeed no Turkey, no Syria, Iraq, Israel, you name it. Such is the size of China. Sometimes you have to put yourselves into the shoes of someone else. And this is that kind of thought exercise. And this is the neighbor that Japan has had and will continue to have until the end of the earth. The next slide. Don't get disappointed. Don't get dis depressed. Japan is not necessarily. As small as it might appear. And this is what I did with Japan, and I put the Japanese archipelago、uh, in this neighborhood UK, Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, and you will see Japan may be slim. Japan's not a、um, fat country, the、um, uh, bulge bracket is not there. In Japan, but it's a long island or long archipelago from up north of Hokkaido to down south to the Senkakus and Okinawas. The Japanese archipelago, if put in this map, would cover such a long extended area. Abe, Shinzo Abe. Knows this. And I think this is going to be one of the preconditions that any future Japanese leader would have to take into consideration very, very carefully to use it 
as an advantage to pursue Japan's national interest. It's a long island, long stretch of islands. It's a maritime nation. It's a sea based nation. The next slide. This is what Japan did vis a vis USSR、uh, during the Cold War era. Indeed, Japanese military political leaders at the time, fully aware of the archipelago's uniqueness, and took advantage of that geographic setting and tried to contain Vladivostok. You see the yellow pin, that's Vladivostok, the central port for the Soviet's navy. Still is, by the way. And by closing, I will show you by closing this and this, this, and this straight, four, four straights all together, here, 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 here. Effectively, the Sea of Japan was contained, i.e., Vladivostok based. Soviet Navy was under the containment of Japanese self defense forces. And it was around that time,、uh, by which I mean the 1980s, Japan developed its cutting edge anti submarine warfare capabilities, of course, along with the US Navy.、Um, now, in the 2020s, Uh, ironically, Japan had its long tail down south, its Okinawan archipelago. See this? It's, an Okina it's the Okinawan archipelago, and the Senkaku Islands are around here. And that's a naturally built hurdle or Chinese wall, if you like, for. Qingdao based Chinese Navy. Again, you see a small yellow pin down below. That's Qingdao. Previously, now, and in the future, Chinese Navy must use Qingdao as among the most important、uh, base ports. Should you wish to gain access to bluer waters, bluer Waters. See, this is a shallow area. But beyond the Okinawan archipelago, you have a deep area. And in order for your submarines to be able to hide, they must gain safe access to these waters. But in order for them to do that, these islands work as a natural hurdle, which is the reason why. The Chinese, vis a vis Japan, are concentrating their assets to provoke Japanese territorial integrity by provoking the Senkaku's ownership, which has never been out of Japan. And then Taiwan's importance is not only about Chinese menta mentality, psychological、uh, importance, certainly、um, Taiwan. Is a symbol、uh, symbolizing the humiliation the Chinese people they say have had to suffer since 1849, in which the great、um, power of UK, Great Britain,、uh, imposed、uh, a treaty upon China and led the Chinese、uh, concede some of the territories. Against the Western imperial powers. So that's another challenge, and that's、uh, an advantage seen from the Japanese perspective, Tokyo must continue to take advantage of. And this is what the Quad is about. You may or may not have heard of the word Quad. Quad is、um, like a diamond. You get four points. This is Tokyo, or arguably Yokosuka, 
That's one of the biggest uh, port cities, both for the Japanese Navy and the American Navy. And India, Australia, and these are Hawaii Islands, where the United States has its biggest uh, uh, military presence uh, west of uh, mainland the United States. Connecting these four points, you get a diamond like this. And that's exactly what Shinzo Abe has been uh, in pursuit of. Um, by bringing Japan closer to India, Australia, in addition to its age-old alliance partner of the United States, Japan re-established its maritime identity. Japan reassured these countries as a reliable democratic colleague uh, who shares similar sets of values. So under Shinzo Abe, my argument is Japan has succeeded in broadening its own strategic space and uh, sending uh, an unquestionable voice, signal, and message to its gigantic neighbor that when it comes to rules for the future, when it comes to rules for international common goods, it is to be these countries, Japan, Australia, India, the United States, that value rules of law that ought to shape the future order. I can stop here, um, but uh, in order for these things to be made pursuable, in order for everything to be pursuable, one thing matters, that is Japan's economy. And uh, it is very much uh, gratifying for me to recall that for, for the first time in many, many years, Japan had a near full employment economy until Wuhan Bowen virus came to visit Japan. 98 out of 100 job seeking college graduates were able to find decent employers. And the same went with high school graduates, 98, the same number, 98 out of 100 uh, found uh, jobs to work for. And two years ago, the government po poll found about 73% uh, of those polled answered that they were contented with their own lives and 23% only 23% answered they were discontented. This poll that the Japanese government has been taking started in 1963. These two numbers were, were both historical high and historical low. It is indeed a pity that such a visionary leader of Shinzo Abe has had to step down due to his chronic illness. But for me personally, it's been, if I um, look back, a very much fortunate period of seven years and eight months uh, during which I was able to spend a lot of time with a leader that was indeed formative in many ways for Japanese modern history. I will stop here and I'll be very much happy to answer whatever questions you might have. Thank you.